so welcome to all of you from uh, IIT Gandhinagar, wherever you may be. As you know, September 1 to 15 is uh, Swachata Pakwada every year now for the last few years. I forget two or three years or so. And um, it's an excellent initiative from the uh, government of India, which is basically meant to encourage people, institutions, students, and various communities to, to you know, practice uh, all kinds of clean, green uh, practices, which uh, our country, India, needs very badly. Um, and we all know that there's so much progress to be done. So at IIT Gandhinagar, we've followed a certain uh, number of activities in this fortnight and um, extending not only on the campus, but even to neighboring villages. And um, as always, the student community has responded with, with much enthusiasm. And uh, we are very happy to have this uh, talk today by Professor Rajesh Dubey of uh, IIT Kharagpur. Uh, on a topic, as you will see, which is very relevant and very critical, especially in the context of uh, Indian cities. But that doesn't mean that uh, rural parts of India uh, should not practice. In fact, they also must uh, practice even sometimes more urgently um, good waste management principles. So with this brief introduction, I'll request Anantu now to introduce our speaker, and we'll be listening to his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker, Dr. Rajesh Ubey. Uh, he is going to talk about the resource recovery from waste circular economy approach for sustainable organization. So, Professor Dubey is presently working at the Department of Civil Engineering uh, at the Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. He has received PhD in Environmental Engineering Sciences uh, from the University of Florida. He has over 16 years of research, teaching, and consulting experience within the broad field of environmental, sustainable engineering, and circular econ economy approaches. Uh, so everyone, please join me in welcoming Dr. Brajesh Dubey. Uh, sir, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, I, you can hear me OK? Yes, sir. Sir, okay. just to interrupt you once, sure. uh, sir, we generally do the recording of the webinars. Mm -hmm. So just would like to take your permission, if, uh, the recording of your presentation, and we generally upload it on our institute's YouTube and center's okay. website. Sure, sure, you can sure. do that. Okay. Send you. me the link as well. I will share it on sure, the social sure. we'll media. Yeah, thank so, you. Okay, so let's uh, get started. Uh, so I'll share my screen. I think you can see my screen now. So, I'm going to put it on slideshow. Okay, so I think everything looks okay. So, good. So, again, thank you. Thank you for inviting me uh, as part of this uh, Swachata Pakwala event, uh, which is a 15 day long event, as it was mentioned. Uh, so, we will get directly into the topic. As, as it was said earlier, like this is a very important topic as part of the Swachata Pakwala that we are talking about waste management. And when we say waste, actually waste is, now we don't uh, think uh, waste as a waste is actually a misplaced resource. It is a resource which can be, can be, we can do resource recovery of this resource, but we have to follow certain protocols for that. So in next 35, 40 minutes, I will just try to highlight that what needs to happen uh, in our country uh, for this waste to really become a resource. So right now, it's mostly uh, ending up in the dump sites, which, which, is not, which is not a sustainable way of doing it, which is not a, a good engineering practice as well. So I'll highlight some of those issues and then try to see what are the potential, or how to go about doing things better. Uh, that's what will be the focus uh, of this particular course. So before we get to the topic, today is Engineers Day, so, and many of us are engineers here. So happy Engineers Day to all of us. So I... And uh, we are really proud of uh, Salvisa Saraya as a, uh, he's one of the pioneer engineers of the world, uh, happens to be from our country. So as we talk about waste management, we talk about sustainability, there is a sustainable development goal, there is circular economy, sustainable engineering. There are several buzzwords, several uh, kind of terminology which is used. But if you think about even the Sachwata Pakwala, why we are doing it? If you look at the why question, it essentially comes down to that, that uh, we have to keep this planet as clean as possible. 
isn't it? That's the overall goal. So that we are safe, all the our uh, like uh, human health and environment. So environment is safe. Our flora, fauna, plants, different species. They are they can flourish on this planet, and this planet remains cleaner uh, for our future generation. At least as clean as we got it. So that's the whole concept behind all these different terminologies that you hear from time to time. So when we are talking about Mother Earth, let's think about what is. Let's talk about Mother Earth itself. Like what is the history of Mother Earth? Mother Earth it says that it's around five billion years old. Some of the recent research suggests that it is even older. It could be, but I mean, let's not get into that argument. Let's focus that it is like four point six billion years old. And out of that, if you think about humanity, which is only 0.2 million. Now, why I'm saying that? Like, let's look at it a little bit in more detail. So, if you put the history of Earth in 24 hours, if you take that 4.6 billion years and put it on 24 hours, that in that time scale, one second is 52,000 years. One second is only 52,000 years. So, and if you look at this timeline here. Is starting from the formation of Earth. Let me get my pointer here for a better. Uh, yeah. So if you see the formation of Earth and you look at different things happened, origin of life, all these fossils, then iron for iron formation, single cell algae, uh, reproduction, seaweeds, jellyfish, so dinosaurs. Dinosaurs also came at, at the after like 1056 p.m., not a.m. Okay, we are looking at p.m. on this side. So just like if you think of uh, this Earth. 24 hour scale, dinosaurs were actually around, uh, around one hour, one hour, four minutes before, dinosaurs were still there. Then we had mammals, then we have humans. Humans at 11.58.43. So that's like, what, one minute, 17 seconds. After one minute, 17 seconds, it will be back to zero. So if you look at the history of our humans, that includes our prehistoric human too. If you think about the modern humans, we are only actually 200,000 years. So 200,000 years means what? Four seconds. On this time scale, we have existed on this planet just for four seconds. And in that four seconds, we have used so much of resources from Mother Earth. We have produced so much of waste in terms of water, air, solid waste, soil pollution. Then it's, it's, it's going to be, this is not the way to, uh, for this planet to survive. We have to do better. And that's why we are having the event like this, uh, Swachhata Pakwala, or all those like, the different conferences, workshops that you hear. This is the basic point that we cannot have business as usual that in four seconds, if you think about it 24 hour scale, in just four seconds, we have essentially destroyed the different aspects of this planet. Now, why? But even in that four seconds, if you look, you look now go a little bit deeper, it is actually the last 200 years. If you look at that, this is the global population. As the population went up, population is in millions here. And this is your year uh, in uh, uh, like in year scale. As these are, of course, in thousands. So before BC, then we are in AD. So after 1700, around 1800 onwards, you see a sharp increase in population. It's actually going vertically up. So it's a huge increase in population means huge demand for resources. Huge demand for resources. That means we have to mine more, we have to do manufacturing more, we have to produce, 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 use, use of lots and lots of raw material. When we, when we get in the raw material, mining, a lot of water footprint, energy footprint, huge pollution, use of the product, just throw the product away. Linear economy, not uh, like a, get the raw material, get, to, uh, get through the metallurgical plants, mechanical, electrical, all those stuff, and then finally make product. And that product goes after use, you just dump it into the environment. That's having a linear scale. We cannot do that. We have to start thinking in a circular way, which I'll try to highlight in the next few slides. So as increase in population, lots of demands for resources. Population is going to go up, although the rate of increase in population, if you can see this purple line, the rate of increase in population is going down. In 2019, it was 1.08% and it is going down. But since our baseline is so high, we will end up probably around 11 billion people in 2100. So a lot of people uh, we have to uh, take care of. And that means a lot of resources will need to be utilized. Now, many more of us, our number exceeds 7.5 billion. Uh, just you look at two countries, China and India, neighboring countries, they are almost uh, together is close to 2.7, 2.8 billion people. 
So more than one third of the world's population is actually sustained in India and China. And that means it's, things are very, very critical in both India and China. China is a bigger country. India is uh, comparatively, India is a smaller country compared to China. So we have, things are very critical in our country. So we have to do things better. Uh, that's the, and what is that better? We will talk about that. So, and the other thing is urbanization. Uh, we have more and more urbanization. We are seeing that in the country, 1900, two out of every 10 people. This is the global number. By 2030, six out of every 10 people will live in urban area. More people in urban area, more demand for resources in smaller pockets. More water treatment plants, uh, so we have to supply water. We have to take the wastewater out and feed it. We have to collect solid waste from there. We have to provide energy to that uh, sector. So, and uh, a lot of waste being produced that has to be managed. So it's that's another problem. When you are in the rural area, of course, you have to do the service, but it's kind of spread around. You have the resources uh, can be uh, like a tapped into, but here you have to find concentrated resources in one place. Urbanize one percent of the land surface. That was the urbanization, but sixty to seventy percent of anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions are actually coming from urban centers. Concentration of population, economic activities, demand for food, energy, water, and material. And that is leading to driving the global uh, land use changes too. Like urban areas is driving the global land use changes. And then because of the land use changes, what we are seeing, we are encroaching in the, in, in the forestry area. We saw that, uh, uh, you may have seen some videos that uh, uh, we have the lion or a cheetah, like a, a, is making way to a five-star hotel in Bangalore or somewhere. Or uh, in IIT Bombay uh, hostels, we most many times we see this uh, uh, animal getting into the IIT Bombay because it's not that animal getting into our space; it is actually we went into their space. Uh, and IIT Kharagpur, some of you may be familiar. Uh, we, uh, I, I, I was born in Kharagpur. I'm, I'm raised in this particular town, so that's why. Uh, I, this particular area is uh, known for snakes. We have lots of. We used to have a lot of snakes. Actually, the number of snakes have gone down. When we see new batches, new students coming in, they com complain that actually said there is a lot of snakes in the campus. I say it's actually much less now, but uh, it, it's, it's not that it is the house of snakes. If this area actually belongs to snakes. We are illegal occupants here. That's, that's what we, we are not doing. They, it's their right. They were here earlier. We came later and we occupied their space. So you have to start thinking uh, to have it like a proper balance in, in, the, in, in the environment, in, in the ecosystem. If, you, if you're using too much resources, you might, you might be familiar with this uh, concept of Earth Overshoot Day, which is essentially tells us that how much, uh, by which date in a particular year, we are using up all the resources uh, that Mother Earth can produce for that year. So for this 2022, July, July 28th was the date. On July 28, 2022, we used up all the resources which was uh, which was which will be produced in the year 2022 by the mother earth. So it is like you are say you make 12 lakhs a year uh, your salary, and you use the entire 12 lakhs by July 28. So what will happen? August, September, October, November, December, you are were running in debt. You are using your credit card. You are putting yourself in debt. Is that economically sustainable model? No. So that's what we are having. A res is that a resource sustainable model that you're looking at on the screen right now? Of course not. As this red line keeps on increasing and increasing and increasing, it's actually a danger sign for us. We have to do things better. We cannot have this linear kind of economy system. We have to get circular. We have to, there should not be any waste. People say if there, is any, there, if there will be any waste where the people like me will be out of job. <laughs> no. <laughs> we will still have job. I'll also you how. Although I'm a solid waste engineer, but I will not be out of service if there, if there is no waste. That's uh, I want the waste to go away. We have to design our product in such a way so that we can do recycling better. We have to do resource recovery better. And at the, at the present use, we will need 1.75 work, and this number will actually keep on increasing. Uh, you can see there was a slight improvement in 2020. I think you can easily guess this is because of the COVID lockdown. Uh, there was slight improvement, but again, we went back to the old uh, numbers. And then, as you can see, this bar is keeps on increasing and increasing the red bar. And then the green bar is going down, which is uh, not really uh, good for us. So 
when we talk about urban, when we talk about sustainability, there is a concept of sustainable city. Like what we, and I'm talking mostly from an environmental point of view. I'll not get into transportation and all those sectors. Uh, just focus on waste management, both the way solid, liquid, and those kind of waste, because solid and liquid waste has a nice synergy too. And they should have a synergy. If you look at the new Singapore city infrastructure that has been built right now, they have come up with a very beautiful concept of water and waste kind of uh, nexus that we say, water and waste, energy, nexus, food, uh, nexus is there. They were trying to, having a systems perspective where you, you can take uh, that in, in, in an urban area, you have all those solar panels and other things for energy, you have sustainable cities, you try to, do re to re reduce the resource consumption, get the recyclables from the waste, save disposal of the residual waste, of the wastewater treatment plant, you treat the wastewater, get the waste, uh, treated wastewater, bring it to the uh, water treatment plant, and then it's treated further, it becomes the water source for us. And uh, the sludge from the wastewater treatment plant can go for the agricultural application, can go even to the biomethanation plant. And then from the biomethanation plant, we can produce energy. That energy can be used by the city itself. And finally, the sludge which is there can be uh, 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 mixed with other uh, vegetative waste and compost and produce some fertilizer. And that fertilizer uh, could be used for uh, city gardens and other things, vertical gardens. People are doing all sorts of things today. So let's have a system where one uh, one's, uh, uh, area, like one uh, process's waste becomes an input to the other process. That's how Mother Earth works. You look at Mother Earth, that's how it works. It doesn't uh, work on producing lots and lots of waste. So, and MSW again, uh, you can do waste to energy if you have uh, enough calorific value. That is also, I will talk about, uh, touch upon that a little bit. Calorific value is very, very important in terms of having a good waste to energy plan. If you and source segregation is also very very important. If you don't do proper source segregation, then you are in, you you cannot actually do much. So if you look at the initial municipal services in the, in the, in the waste management, say uh, solid and liquid waste, you have the city waste sorting. That's very 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 important. Unless you do the source segregation of waste, none of the technology actually works. So first thing that we do as we should do as part of such a part of mission. Uh, which we actually, it, it says that mission of the, uh, that in terms of the mission statement, it says very clearly that source segregation has to be done. But unfortunately, on the ground level, still many places we are not able to do it. Uh, during COVID, some progress that we made earlier during COVID actually we came back a little bit. But now we have to uh, kind of make a big jump in there, having proper source segregation of uh, uh, wet and dry waste. If you can do the wet and dry waste separately, wet waste, which is the organic waste, which is food waste and others, anaerobic digester, uh, you can uh, produce uh, com compressed uh, like biomethane and that methane uh, CBG process that again, government set up the scheme. So government has come up with so many different schemes over the last, uh, like almost uh, over, like over last several years and which has, which has all the, whatever we are talking about, all those things are there. What is the problem then? It's the implementation having proper infrastructure, capacity building, both physical capacity as well as the intellectual capacity. People being trained in this area. In fact, we need waste management training centers pretty much uh, at least five, six in the country where we, we do training in, in local languages, in simple languages so that people can understand. Just doing big, big workshop in five-star hotel is not going to solve the problem. We have to take this to the ground and get these things done. Uh, so anaerobic digester, get the biomethane, pump it, then you run buses out of that. And all these things are being done in the world, in different places in the world. We have to, because they're able to do it, because they are, they have set up a proper system of source segregation and all that. Residual, in terms of your, uh, uh, the sludge from there can be used as soil improver. Uh, in terms of what is the uh, residual waste, you look at if it's a good calorific value, you put it in waste to energy, you generate heat, it could be used, you can produce electricity, and then ash can go to as a construction material. They use it as a construction material. We have to, of course, you have to check. We have to go for that what is known as beneficial reuse risk assessment. We have to do the beneficial reuse risk assessment and see what is there in the ash. Look at the leachability of different contaminants to make sure that we are not creating another problem. And recyclables, put it in the recycling center, put the material value, recycle and recover. If you visit some of the Western European countries, they already have these kind of systems in place, but they have been working on it since 1980s. It took them time. 
these things does not happen overnight. We have to keep some patience as well. But we have to do things correctly. Jaldi karna hai, jaldi nahi karna hai. There is a difference there. We have to do uh, like uh, it's uh, usko Hindi, bo, Hindi mein hi jada achha lagta hai mein. To jaldi kijiye, jaldi mat kijiye. We have to do it quickly, but not in a hasty way. So that we make we end up making mistakes and then going back to the square one. As we have seen in many places, the plants are not working, compost plant not working, waste energy plants are struggling because we have to do some homework before uh, we go to that stage. So uh, you must have heard about circular economy. I kind of already told, kind of give you some idea of what is circular economy. It's having a systematic approach, systemic approach to economic development, which is designed to benefit, of course, for society, businesses, environment, the three pillars of sustainability. In contrast to take, make waste linear model, which I was trying to explain, it says that let's gradually decouple growth from the consumption of finite resources. So how we can do that? We can do that by bringing the waste back into the economy as a resource. So rather than waste being uh, dumped somewhere, we bring it back into the economy as a resource. So circular economy, the life looks at the positive society-wide benefits, decouple economic activity from the consumption of finite resource and design waste out of the system. No waste, like moving towards zero waste. When we say zero waste, we don't really, really mean zero, zero. We mean that let's minimize the waste as much as possible. What if the waste and pollution were never created in the first place? So is that 100% possible? No. There will always be some waste. I'll give you an example of Western European countries. When you visit there, they're still 10% or below 10% waste is still going to the sanitary landfill. So unfortunately, although I would like it that we should not have any landfill, but we do a landfill or something similar to landfill has to be there because the technology is not there to kind of treat entire waste that we produce. And at the same time, for some of the waste categories, if you go for uh, treatment and all and resource recovery, in fact, you do more harm to the environment than the good because the kind of uh, energy footprint, water footprint, and all those things that will be required, the economics, if you do the economics of it, if the, you will find that actually it's better to put it in an engineered landfill, at least as of now, because we don't have proper know-how as of today to kind of deal with that kind of, maybe in future, we may be able to, I don't know, but right now it's not. So we have to get the negative impact, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, hazardous substances and all that. So I gave you this example of like an energy factory before, wastewater treatment plant, uh, the sludge goes here in the biogas plant. Clean water goes for agricultural other uh, applications. From the, this uh, biogas plant, uh, the, the sludge from here can be used as organic fertilizer. Then you have phosphorus and other things that be recovered. Biogas can go for electricity and heat. And from your, where the source of waste is coming from, organic waste from industry, organic waste from household, manure and organic waste from agriculture. So as you can see, it's kind of a circular economy. Of course, there will be some residual and there are people working on Helsinki. And this is one example. There are a lot of other cities around the world which are looking at this in a very, very critical way. Now, why it is important to do that? From again and again, I will be asking you the why question, the reason, and I'll also be giving you the answer why it is important. We are using too much of resource. I'm not going to read each and every line on this slide. Uh, it's, you, you can uh, watch it, uh, pause in the video later on too. But the increase in resource per capita, if you look at from 4.6 tons to almost 9 tons in 2005, and it's still again went up. So we are using so much of resource and because of growing population, economy development, increasing consumption, and they are leading to increased resource extraction, greenhouse emission, land degradation, water pollution, loss of biodiversity, air pollution, and ultimately it has all the impact on human health. So it cannot, we cannot keep on going on mining again and again and keep on extracting from say 1900, 7 billion ton extraction in 2015 estimated is 140 billion tons, 20 times. So we cannot have that uh, debate. It's uh, Mother Earth cannot see even the things that are abundantly available is still there. There is an X value there. We, uh, at some point of time, it will not be available. It's, and now, if you think about rare earths, rare earths they are called rare earth because it's rare. Now those uh, it's uh, and we need rare earth in a lot of uh, electric vehicles and a lot of uh, new uh, like uh, those uh, renewable energy applications. So we, can, we cannot really, we don't have much rare earth in the environment. So we have to start uh, looking at uh, things in more critical way. Some countries, if you look at Japan, they are already kind of doing that. You look at uh, some good examples from other parts of the world too. In fact, the Japan, the last year, the Olympics, 
uh, the, all the metals came from recovered uh, gold, silver, bronze from electronic waste and other waste streams. So there are there is a way. We have to make it uh, possible. If you look at an Indian context too, again in India there was this war report was done a few years back where were past and projected future resource use in India. You see, we will by 2050 we need a lot of biomass, non-metal minerals, fossil fuel, metal. Now, it, the report very clearly says the future needs of India for resources and dimension and challenges such as resource availability and access, affordability and sustainability makes it clear that resource efficient production process and use of secondary materials are inevitable. We have to use them. We don't have any other option. That option is over. The time has come where we have to use secondary resource. Secondary resource means resource generated from the waste. And these are all linked to the sustain 17 sustainable development goals that we have. And uh, if you look at the waste management part, they kind of lead to good health and well-being. They also, gender issues are there. It also linked to the clean water. It also linked to resource consumption, sustainable cities. Even I would say to some extent, say inequality in terms of uh, all those workers' conditions and all that, efficient work, economic growth, clean energy, climate action. So partnership for goals. So many of these social development SDGs uh, we can uh, we can touch. It. So how we can how we can do it? What is the way to what is the what is the solution? We have talked about problem. We kind of alluded to the solution as well. So how we can go about that? We have to have a systems thinking. We need to have like look at the system, look at the entire system. Like I would say, told you the example of Helsinki or Singapore, or even in certain places in India, we have started looking at that too. Look at the thing we broadly, like in terms of wastewater, solid waste, liquid waste, all together. How can we bring them together? I look at system thinking. There are no perfect solution or choice we'll make. We have to have the optimum solution. See, solution which works. Uh, we should not go for very high fi technology for which we, we don't have engineer strain, which we don't we maintain those plants. That is also very, very important. It's not only making those plants. It ha we have to maintain, we have to run those plants as well. So even if it give, gives us 90% or even 80% of uh, uh, the treatment, I'm happy with that. But if I, if I construct something which gives me 95, 99%, but it works only for two months, three months to three years, and then after that, we are back to the square one. We lose all the taxpayers' money. That's not right. So we have to have a broad thinking there. Have a framework in terms of uh, there are different tools out there for systems-based energy application, uh, engineering application for integrated solid waste management. Look at the life uh, to use the tools of life cycle, which is kind of tells you which has a better environmental footprint. In our analytical hierarchy process, goals, criteria, comparison metrics, weighing uh, of the process. GIS, look at the GIS aspect, which is a very good tool in terms of that. Having this systems-based engineering application that we can come up with uh, the response. And our research group uh, was lucky that we were uh, we partnered with several uh, uh, cities in the country. We have worked for WISAC, we have done WISE work for Guwahati, we have worked for New Newtown in Kolkata, and then we have done a little bit of uh, kind of uh, interaction with Ahmedabad City too. And uh, we have uh, come up with some papers and other uh, recommendation which is available in the public domain. And if you are interested, you can always email me. I'll be happy to uh, provide those to you. So the circular economy diagram, I think we talked enough about circular economy, so we can go there. So in terms of waste management, if we kind of talk a very clear, specifically on waste, we are going to see a lot of waste, which is uh, 2.1 billion tons, 2.01 billion tons. It is going to increase by 3.4 by 2050. But if you look at the waste, what is there? Metal 4%, glass 5%, plastic 12, paper and cardboard 17. Uh, green waste is around 44. If you add them up, they are not 100%. But that means there are other waste categories as well. So individually, metal has market, glass has market, plastic has market, but paper and cardboard has market. Even food and green waste, we can do compost in another digestion. But why it is not happening? What is the problem? The problem is the waste gets totally mixed up. And if the problem is not only in India, it's a kind of a global problem. Only there are a, a handful of countries around the world who are actually doing well in terms of waste management. It was mostly in the European Union and a little bit in North America, you can say North America, some states are doing better uh, than the other. Some states and provinces of US and Canada are doing better than the other. Uh, so if you look at, this is a slightly older diagram, uh, but uh, still, if you just look at the competitive purposes, this diagram on the top says how much waste is produced per year, uh, per person. 
and then how much is recycled, how much is uh, the, how many of waste energy plants they have, and then what how much is going to the engineered landfill or dump sites. So here UK was uh, separated, although Brexit was not did not have happened at this time when this graph was made, but they have UK around fifty percent is still going to the dump site. Uh, if you look at the European Union, thirty percent. Is the Western European countries, it is less than 10%. But when you go to the Eastern European countries, they are in bad shape too. A lot of waste energy plant, which was they have source segregation is good. They have a good calorific value, good amount of recycling, and they also produce quite a bit of waste. Coming to India, we have the waste generation is quite low. This number is going up. As the GDP of the country goes up, we see more and more waste being produced as well. We do have now, uh, I think around five, six waste energy plants uh, in India. Some of them are struggling. And the, when this diagram was made, we had around 91% going to the dump site. I think this number is uh, lower now. Uh, but uh, in terms of recycling, since we have informal recycling, we don't have actual uh, value. Uh, the World Bank report or this particular diagram that didn't have actual value at that particular time. So this is what uh, the, so as you can see, a lot of uh, many countries around the world has landfilling is still happening, landfilling or dump sites. So we have to do better. And one thing to do better, which I kind of wrote almost four, more than four years ago, is that you have to have, for effective waste disposal, segregation is the key. If you want to just take one uh, point out of this uh, talk today, and one point you want to remember, wherever you go as an ambassador for waste management, just uh, stress upon that unless you do the source segregation, unless you do, if you cannot do source, although ideally you should do source segregation. If you cannot do source segregation, at least you have some sort of segregation in the collection system. Without that, no technology is going to work. You may get some vendors coming and showing you some nice diagram. These days, very beautiful softwares are available, beautiful, uh, uh, like they can show nice PowerPoints can be made and showed, but actually they don't work. I have been working in this sector for last 20 years uh, from 2001, and I had a chance to work in several countries around the world with several cities, several government agencies, and it does not work. Mixed garbage, only one solution, engineer landfill. All that's the only solution we have for to make any because these are all processes, isn't it? If you some of you, we, these are chemical processes, biochemical processes. We, if the feed to the process is bad, there cannot be a magic inside that process. Of course, you will have say if you have a you are trying to make compost with the food waste, you have some metals, you have some plastic, compost cannot be good. If you have a uh, waste to energy plant and you are getting a lot of rainfall, your garbage truck is not is open, not closed. Rainfall in, in uh, say, a place like uh, West Bengal or Kerala or other places where you get a lot of rain, calorific value is gone. So how the waste to energy plant will work? So we have to really, uh, they are talking about incineration plant, how the incineration plant will work, not good calorific value. So we have to really look at the problem. And there are uh, a lot of favorites since 2001 when the municipal solid waste management rules came and then after that, uh, Swachh Bharat mission, to a uh, lot of uh, initiative has come and also the SDG goals. So if you look at any particular waste management, if you talk about Ahmedabad city or any city per se, first of all, what we need to do is we have to find out what is really needed. And when we say what is needed is we also have to say what type of waste are currently generated and in what quantities. This I, some of you who have heard me before, you must have heard that I keep on saying that this is like doing the blood test, urine test, and x-ray. See, we have to first understand the problem. You see, if I'm critically ill, without doing any of this diagnosis if the doctor writes prescription, I will, I will be really uncomfortable with that prescription because those doctors do not exist anymore. Now, though they, you know, when uh, earlier days, we used to have some doctors who can just see it like that and can write something and give you. But now you have to do some diagnosis. Uh, one problem we have in uh, the waste management is we have been writing prescription for last 20 years without doing proper diagnosis of the problem. We even don't know what type of waste we have. Well, and how quantity we produce. That number is also we don't know very well. Uh, like uh, many times we do sampling at houses, but the waste which is ending up at the treatment system is different. Because in between you had the primary collection center where the cows came or the uh, like uh, dog came and uh, like goat came and ate away all the organics. In between the rack pickers came and took all the recycling out. Now you did the sampling at house. You designed your plant based on the sampling done at the house. What you are getting is way different because most of the stuff that you are looking for is actually gone either by eating of the animals or a little bit of degradation because the collection is not happening at the regular interval. You are, uh, there is a gap there. So you, you're, and you, your plant fails. So you have to really understand the problem. 
That's if you understand the problem well, the technologies are available which we can do it. But that's where that's where the operational issues, that management issues comes in. Then you review the existing system. What is there? You cannot many times you cannot start from scratch. Review existing regulation. Make a decision-making framework, like I, as I said earlier. Look at the system's perspective. Have objective. What's your short-term and long-term goal? Then identify the components. Do the comparing of the options. See, there cannot be one size fit all. If it's what what will work, say in uh, uh, desert desert area of uh, Gujarat or other places where there, there is not much rainfall, will may not work in a place like uh, uh, in Kochi with a lot of rainfall, or in, in Bengal where I'm sitting right now. And what will work here may not work there. Even the type of garbage is also slightly different based on the economic conditions, based on uh, the food habits. So there is a lot of, there is variability. There cannot be one size fit all for a country. We are, it's a big country. So we have to look at different options, develop the plan, implement the plan, and again, revisit the plan. Many big cities, if you look at Toronto or Singapore or San Francisco, they make a 25-year plan. And every five years, they go and revisit. And then they kind of fix this plan and look at what is working, what is not working, something which is not working, why it is not working. That's very, very important. And the core of that is education, education, education. Make people aware, public participation. You are getting raw material for your waste treatment system every day from the individual houses. So unless public operate, we cannot have a good service management system. We have to get public on board. Uh, and then that requires a lot of outreach as well. So let's, uh, what is uh, in terms of uh, like uh, different options from uh, your generation uh, for, for storage, collection, transfer and transport, processing, treatment, disposal. For the entire C system, there are certain input parameters, there are certain output parameters. So we can look at in terms of what is its real environmental footprint. And there could be different options here. We can uh, look at the different options and make a decision. So that's uh, what we're just trying to talk about, that we can use a tool like lifecycle analysis tool. And then you look at what is the proper treatment technology. Where there are several bio, bio, biological chemical conversion is there, composting, anaerobicization, thermal conversion is also there. Some will work, some will not work for your waste. But what will work will depend on what is there in your garbage. You have to look at the quality of the garbage. And it's, uh, then the quality of the raw material, I should not say garbage, it's the raw material for the treatment technologies. So you have to find that quality. And then you have to also look at the economics. When you, when you will be producing this product, do we have market? See, if I take entire Ahmedabad's uh, food waste and Ahmedabad Gandhinagar area's food waste, if I take and if I make compost out of that, do we have market for all those compost within say 50, 100 kilometers? We have to do that. If it's there, great. If it's not there, then we have to think, should we do composting? Because if I'm not able to sell compost, how long I will survive on government subsidy? So that, that kind of uh, discussions we need to have before we set up the plan. Jaldi karna hai, jaldi karna hai. That's what, uh, like have a very thorough thought out process uh, so that we don't waste taxpayers money. That's very, very important. You know, we already know this, I'll kind of start. And then we had several committees which came up, uh, which looked at, we had the Supervision Committee, National Action Plan, say on the city HO manual, different rules and regulations are there. So one scenario which I want to highlight that we are trying to build a lot of waste energy in the country. And uh, this is 2018 data. Uh, so here, if you look at the operational was 69 megawatts, under construction is 84 megawatts, proposed is 383 megawatts, but there is non-functional of 67 megawatts. Now, why it is non-functional? Before I go and construct the next uh, uh, waste energy plan, I this the most critical question we should look at is why these are non-functional. These are all taxpayers' money. These are all yours, mines. Everybody, each and every individual of this country is actually paying for it because GST or whatever through we are paying for. It. So why it is not working? What is going wrong? Are we repeating? Will this proposed will will this draft keeps will this bar keeps on going up in here in the future? It should not. So we have to make sure that this bar should not grow. And the operational should be more and more. This should be more. And this should not be there. This should be minimum. Uh, if it's the, what so why? Are we, is it a technological issue? Is it an operational issue? Is it a manager, management issue? What is not working? If the economics not working? So we have to do a critical analysis before I think we can look at. Uh, so that, that's very much needed. Unless we do that, what will happen is we will end up using a lot of money here, and then later on we'll not have money to do even the good things. 
uh, which will work. So I'm not saying this will not work. This can work, but why it is failing? That's very much important. There are a lot of good things are happening in, uh, at a, uh, in the country as well. But, uh, these are all pictures from India. I've not taken any uh, picture from outside India. And some of the pictures are from uh, Ahmedabad too. Like uh, I, I have, uh, in fact, like I have an apartment in Ahmedabad. So I do go there uh, from time to time. So, uh, so this is a, in terms of uh, biodegradable, uh, like uh, you can short it out. You have a uh, manual shorting is also done, composting, biomethanation. So the people are doing different uh, technologies are already being used. So you see those uh, sorting areas, formally screen, manual sorting. This is your such a uh, collection of dry waste. Again, these things. So we are, there are a lot of uh, uh, things. Are, it's not that things are not working out. Uh, uh, this is your from the Victoria Garden, uh, Green Waste Processing. I visited, uh, seven, I think, three, four years back now and took the pictures at that particular time that they're making this compost. So there are uh, good things uh, is, uh, taking place. We had a chance, we did a actually visit as part of the proposed smart city. We went to Udaipur, Delhi, Bhopal, we had Masakapatnam, Indore, and Ahmedabad and looked at their waste management. What is the, how, what they are doing, how uh, they are trying to uh, make it uh, better waste management. What are the uh, good things about there? What are the lessons could be learned for the other cities? And that has been published also in, uh, in some papers uh, out there. So uh, they we're looking at what were their storage and collection, transfer, transport, treatment, disposal, what uh, things were there. Then what are the challenges in terms of generation, storage, collection, transport, processing? I kind of highlighted all those challenges already as part of uh, the discussion we had on other slides. So bottom line is have to have a proper source segregation. Uh, unless you do proper source segregation, none of this technology works. For the technology to work, you have to have a holistic view. Look at the big picture uh, stuff. And then when you design a plant, uh, when you design some, some certain infrastructure, for example, you see you see a picture of your Vizac. We, we were involved with that uh, Vizac. So we looked at what they, how they are doing presently. So this is of some pictures of what is happening right now. And then we looked at uh, what should they do? Like what are the things they should do? And then we also advise them in terms of how to improve their primary collection, source segregation, uh, some issues with the composting unit. So we had a, the WISAC actually a pretty progressive uh, our team of people there. Uh, so we had a very good uh, uh, interaction and uh, we worked with them. In fact, there is a PhD, entire PhD was done uh, based out of this WISAC. So uh, in terms of how we looked at it, we took their waste, uh, we brought their waste uh, and then uh, did the detailed characterization. As you can see, these are all the waste being collected, uh, waste sample being collected out and uh, looked at, uh, uh, brought that sample in our lab uh, from different uh, locations. And uh, we did the characterization. We did entire blood, blood test, urine test kind of stuff. And then we gave them the recommendation in terms of what can potentially work in, uh, if they want to do waste energy, what they should do uh, in terms of their uh, uh, like a landfill uh, mining. So those recommendations were provided uh, to them as well. So we talked about different technologies, uh, like refuse derived fuel is another technology, which is uh, quite a bit of use, the incineration, we talked about that, anaerobic digestion, we talked about that. And then if you have it, if you have landfill, like uh, landfill, uh, uh, you, if you have to go for sanitary landfill, you can even capture landfill gas and produce electricity from that. So landfill gas to energy is also possible. In fact, in South Carolina, there is a plant which uses that for, uh, uh, or even the BMW. If you buy a BMW one day in US, if you're in US, uh, it could be that the plant which made this BMW was actually running on the gas coming from this trash uh, landfill, you know, the, the municipal solid waste engineered landfill. Now uh, we worked on this uh, technology but very quickly. Next two minutes, I'll wrap it up so that we have the time for questions and answers. So this is a technology which is known as hydrothermal carbonization, which is kind of wet torrefaction. We have been doing some work with that recently in our lab, and we are trying to say if you if, if economics has to work, you guys are in Gujarat. Gujarat is actually every the, they know how to do business, isn't it? That's what. Uh, so there, you you have to make economics work. Any technology you propose, economics has to work. There has to be some value added product. So we are looking at this food waste or even the agricultural waste. Can we do some value added product out of that? So we did this hydrothermal and produce this hydrochar, and this hydrochar. Uh, was could be used as a potential uh, replacement for coal. So this is the uh, like a reactor, the yard waste and food waste. We produce hydrochar. We made this fuel pallets, and that fuel pallets was very similar to lignite. So it can replace coal uh, in uh, wherever the coal is required. 
and then you can palletize it. You can uh, which, which you can make it is for easy to store, and you can take it uh, for uh, like transportation and all that. And that uh, makes it a nice uh, fuel. And then we also took this material further, and we as part of this, we are looking at the entire business case uh, in terms of uh, looking at the social aspect, looking at the economic aspect. How much is the environmental benefits? So all those uh, 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 things uh, uh, were done on that uh, as well in terms of uh, for the hydrothermal carbonization, how much market is there. And then uh, we looked at this hydrothermal carbonization requires water. Now, nobody will allow me to use water uh, with waste. So we said, oh, can we use wastewater or landfill leachate rather than using water? So we use landfill leachate as an alternative moisture uh, for that. And then we did find that property does not change much. It still could be used. And then the good thing, which I really wanted to highlight, that we even take that uh, hydrochar which is produced and use and treated it further in pyrolysis to make a carbon material which could be used as an electrode material for super capacitor, super capacitor applications. We are trying to uh, like a, do a patent out of that as well. So it's uh, this which is, we are talking about solar. We are talking about wind. They are not twenty four seven. So we need a lot of electrical storage material. Uh, right now, we are uh, importing those materials. Can we take food waste, yard waste, agricultural waste that being burned in uh, Haryana, Punjab? Can we take that and make some good product which could be used in our electrical storage? So that will create a market. Our automatically, business will. Come. So that's what we are trying to do over here. So this uh, uh, this is uh, just in showing different applications for that. Just wanted to highlight some of the work that we have been uh, doing in our lab recently. So it had some. Uh, Media coverage. This is uh, this was the PhD work of Hari Bhakt Sarma. Uh, he is you can see him in the picture right here. Some papers uh, and then media coverage of all that. And then I do work with some startups. If some of you are working with some startups, if you need help in terms of the waste management, uh, there is a lot of potentials are there. We can uh, provide you some uh, guidance and help with that. And we are also working on several others like plastic waste, is, uh, nanoparticles for remediation, organic waste to biogas, electrochemical oxidation for leaching. So a lot of work has been going on. Most of it is kind of focused on circularity, as you can see, a lot of circles here. So just try to keep waste away from landfill and try to do a lot of value of the product. So just if some of you want to come and join our lab later on, you can, you can uh, talk about that. So I, there are a lot of courses also on the NPTEL platform from our lab. Uh, on uh, basic environmental engineering, on electronic waste, on integrated waste management. This course is running right now. Then uh, life cycle analysis, which kind of I look, we talked about. And finally, thanks to all my students. Uh, it, not, none of these things are possible without a good uh, set of students. I've been lucky to get a good set of students and they work, they work pretty hard. And then they make us look smarter when we present. Actually, it's their hard work uh, which uh, uh, it makes things possible. So thank you, and uh, uh, I, I think the floor is open for any questions. So.